video is really interesting. We're taking a look at the all new MacBook Air and we're taking a look at one of the biggest changes to the industry in maybe the industry's history. Apple coming out with their own chips, their own processors known as the M1. And this is one of the first devices to have this particular chip. Now I am interested in how Apple will continue its naming scheme. Will every year a new chip come out? It'll be M1, M2, M3, M4, but most likely it'll probably be that the M1 is the weakest chip and let me tell you, weakest is not the right word because these chips are absolutely insane. But we'll get to that in just a second. On top of that, um, in terms of results, that means they might make an M2, M3, M4, M5 for the Mac Pros and the iMacs. And that might be their new way of showing off how good these devices are. But if this is their base model, this is like one of the cheapest laptops slash computers that they have right here, right? And it's performing absolutely insane in every single thing anyone's thrown at it. Every YouTuber is just astounded, like shocked. Everyone's jaw dropped at the fact that this thing can render without a fan. And even the Mac Pro, I've heard, was rendering things without ever turning on its fan because the processor is so efficient. Not to mention the fact that a load of speed, a speed boost to that extreme, everyone would just be like, wow, we are definitely buying this. But no, they decided to double battery life as well to the point where MKBHD himself was able to use this thing for four days on one charge. How insane is that? Now inside of the box, this thing looks sleek. It's a classic Apple MacBook, Pro, uh, MacBook Air slash Pro box. You got yourself your USB-C. Uh, USB-C outlet and of course the power brick itself. You also get yourself some instruction manual along with some really really nice black Apple stickers which is really really cool and of course the MacBook itself encased in this really really satisfying plastic which is all in all very very sleek but it's what's on the inside that matters. Now I am slightly frustrated one big pet peeve I have with the Pro not this device is that this device has two USB-C uh, inputs right and the Mac Pro also has two. Why? If it's the Pro one, shouldn't it have four? People need to plug in more professional things? I don't know. That's just a little pet peeve I'd point out. On top of that, this thing also has a variety of new tech inside of it that makes it really, really interesting, aside from the 8-core GPU, you know? So this thing can get 18 hours of battery life. It's also running the latest macOS Big Sur, which is really, really cool. And because of the M1 chip, this thing can actually run iOS applications, which is really, really cool because a lot of iOS developers will probably go ahead and update their uh, applications to run a lot better on Mac. And maybe one day we will see a fully uniform iOS, macOS, and iPad OS. It also has your usual 2560 by 1600 retina display which is really really awesome and if you really need another display this thing can actually power a full-on 6k xdr display as well which is nuts because this is the macbook air this is literally one of the lowest end macbooks that you could possibly get this is base and all that and yet it still has that kind of power built into it which is just mind-boggling on top of that this thing also has wi-fi 6 you also get USB 4 and of course um, it's really really awesome in terms of its design because nothing has changed it hasn't really gotten thicker or thinner it's not really something you know design it's the classic MacBook Air that we all have known to love and yet the changes inside are in just mind-boggling like we have the processor that has built-in RAM and the built-in chips like Apple's chips that you know connect easily to AirPods and of course there's security chips for where all your information is stored and all in all it just looks sleek and yet doesn't seem any different from the last iteration and yet on the inside it's completely different the battery life has changed the processing power has changed it can render things and blow through it it's literally keeping up with things like the Mac Pro itself and it's completely destroying things like Ryzen, completely destroying things like the i9, the i7, things people won't even consider once they realize that the M1 has this kind of power. We are on the brink of probably another processor war, so I'm intrigued with what will come of this, but for the time being, Apple, way to go. I guess they did have the technology all along to make really, really insane devices. They just saved it for a rainy day, like 2020. Setup all in all is the usual Apple setup. Big Sur makes things a little bit easier, and of course, if you have another MacBook, getting from one to the next is super super seamless and if you're setting up new it's also super super seamless so go ahead and check out the link below maybe this is the laptop for you we'll check it out in the full review hopefully you guys enjoyed this video so leave a like and don't forget to subscribe thank you guys for watching this is going to be me logging off